All right, just want to welcome everybody this morning. Uh, so good to see everybody in the house of the Lord this morning. Just a couple of quick announcements. Don't forget tonight is our first Sunday night of the month fellowship, and uh, the meal will be provided. We just need you guys to bring uh, dessert. So uh, just bring a dessert tonight and uh, stick around, have a great time of fellowship. Uh, October the 9th is homecoming, and uh, we'll be welcoming uh, Brother Mark Krieger with us. October 15th is our Beast Feast, uh, so we could, I'm sure Marty could still use some help October the 14th to help cook, and the 15th it starts at 4, 4, yep, it starts at 4, I know, <laughs> it starts at 4 o'clock, Beast Feast. Uh, and then also, uh, our Monday night uh, teen Bible study or young adults Bible study, uh, we'll be meeting at the fountains there in Easley, at the Old Market Square area. We'll be meeting there at the fountains. I don't know what the weather's supposed to be like, but if I find out, then I'll shoot a text out to everybody and let them know uh, the change of plans. And uh, also, we'd just like to welcome any of our special guests this morning. Uh, if you are uh, visiting for the first time, or if you have not filled out a card there on the back side of the pew, love to get that information from you so we can find out more about you and get more information about our church to you. Uh, October 23rd, we're having a welcome to BRV luncheon. Uh, so if you are not a member, uh, we would love to have you uh, that Sunday after our morning service for that luncheon. It's just a great time for us to tell you all about our church and uh, for you to learn us and for us to learn you. So we'd love to have you then uh, that Sunday. Uh, the, the little card that you fill out when the offering plate comes around, you can just stick it in the offering plate. And uh, it's just so... So good to see you all here. Amen. Let's start in prayer and we'll get, we'll get started. <clears throat> Dear Father, Lord, we love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you so much for this beautiful day that you have given us, Lord, to come together, Lord, to worship you, Lord. And as we learned in Sunday school this morning, Lord, there's only one thing that makes this place special, and it's we get to meet the living God here in this house with God's people. And we thank you so much for that, Lord. We pray that you will meet with us this morning. Lord, I pray that myself and everyone in here is obedient to the word today. Uh, Lord, we will do whatever you have called us to do today. And Lord, I pray that we will apply it to our word, to our apply your word to our lives as we leave this place. Lord, Lord, we love you. We thank you in Christ. And I do pray. Amen. All right. Uh, Brother Jack is, uh, is not with us this morning. Uh, so he will be back tonight so continue to lift up brother jack in prayer he is preaching this morning so let's stand and let's sing uh tis so sweet to trust in jesus <clears throat> Ah! 
the song says how uh, I've proved him more and more. I, I don't know what I've proved more, uh, him or the fact that I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Amen. I just mess up. And then I'm like, oh, Lord, get me out of this. And, uh, but I, I'm, I'm thankful to uh, know that he is there. Amen. And I am thankful that uh, as we sanctify and as we grow in Christ, our trust in him does grow. So he's not having to get me out of them holes I put myself in so much, you know. Amen. Thank, thank him for that. All right, let's turn and uh, 413, faith is the victory. Encamped along the hill, the Christian soldiers rise and press the battle. Father, thank you so much for an opportunity to be in your house today. Dear Lord, just thank you for everything you give us, dear Lord, and the love you give us and show us each and every day. Dear Lord, we ask your blessings on this offering. We ask you to take it and use it to glorify you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. tells us that without faith it's impossible to please God. I don't know about you, but I want to please Him. I'm grateful that the faith that we have in the Lord gives us victory over the world. And so let's encourage each other with that truth this morning. Let's stand together, remind somebody that faith is the victory. Let's welcome our guests especially this morning.
uh, before we uh, sing our last verse, I'm like, Miss Marie uh, has something she wants to talk about a new class. Yeah, it, it didn't make it to the bulletin with the internet being out. So um, I will be doing a class on Wednesday, October 12th at 7 o'clock in the back build, no, in the fellowship hall. Um, and it will be on biblical worldview. And it's, it's important, especially if you have children or grandchildren in public schools, they are been being bombarded by other worldviews. And I will discuss what they are, but I will be going over biblical worldview, um, the definition of a worldview, how a person's worldview is formed, six components of a biblical worldview, three dangers facing a biblical worldview, and then issues uh, addressed through a biblical worldview. So there's a sign-up sheet in the vestibule. If you want to come, sign up. Um, I need to know who's coming because I have materials that I have to reproduce to hand out. So I hope you'll come. And uh, it's, it's, it's uh, something we need. As time goes on, it gets worse and worse, and we're bombarded more and more. So Amen. hope you'll come. Amen. And also just a quick reminder, our new believers class will be today at 5 o'clock as well. I forgot that earlier. All right, let's start on that, that last verse. To
think I'll make Jesus my all and all. And from now on, when I'm in trouble, on his name I'll call. And if I don't trust in him, I'd be less than a man because I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my the mountain is too high and the valley is too wide down on my knees i've learned to stand because i can't even walk without you holding this uh this song that we're going to sing this first song we're going to sing is uh one of our our uh our young adult choir's favorite it's one of my favorite and it's something i can celebrate today and every day and that's that i'm not going to hell amen or as i like to say it with two syllables i'm not going to hell Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And, and why? It's not because I've earned something, right? It's because Tommy just said, I can't even walk without him holding my hand. It's because I put my faith and my trust in Jesus Christ who died for me. Amen. So uh, as we sing this, if y'all want to sing along, you're more than welcome. Sin. I was living, no thought was I giving up dying or where I would go. I was looking at buying, so hard was I trying to gain all this world had to owe. Well, no peace and no pleasure could I even measure with all that I had to gain. I repented. But in Christ save me that day Now I have got something to say I'm not going to hell I'll let the Savior love story I'll tell I'm saved and forgiven Set free all is well I'm not going to hell No Oh, 
sinful flesh, robed in his righteousness, I'll be like him. Our Lord is coming. Our Lord is Well, I give the Lord praise. I'm so thankful that He's coming again. And there's, the victory is, is for all believers in Christ. And we have victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You're on the winning side this morning. And it feels pretty good, doesn't it? To have peace in your heart and joy in your heart. And, and to have heaven as your home. And to know that uh, one day we're going to say goodbye, world, goodbye. Uh, but until then, certainly there are difficulties along the way. And so I want to preach to you this morning a message entitled, Why is it difficult to trust God sometimes? I'm sure that uh, we've all experienced that. We wonder what in the world's going on. Things don't make sense. I'm glad that just because it doesn't make sense to us doesn't mean that God's still not on the throne and God's still not working and that there's, not st there's still not victory that we can have by trusting the Lord. There's faith, in the, faith is the victory, as we sang uh, this morning, and so I want to encourage you this morning, maybe you're going through some difficult times and going through some hardships, and that certainly uh, when our circumstances are like that, it, it does blur our vision, and uh, that's, that's what I want to begin with this morning. I mean, have you ever noticed how students, it amazes me, how students can send a text message, and they can be carrying on this conversation with you, and it's like da-da-da-da-da, done, and it's, and it's sent. I, I mean, it's, it's just amazing to me. I mean, it takes me, it's like, um, if I say, hi, how are you? It's like H, D, no, no, not H, C, H, A, no, no, uh, H, E. Finally, I'll get one word done, and they've already got the whole thing sent. You know, it's, it's amazing. But, but imagine this morning, even our students, what if I were, to, I were to tell them to send a simple text message, hey, how are you? Well, that's real simple. They could do that probably in five seconds or less. But here's the thing, what if this morning... I were to give every one of our students glasses and rubbed Vaseline on those lenses of those glasses. And, and then all of a sudden, what was really simple, and, had, and they've done many, many times, turns into a really difficult task because they have blurred vision. They put the, they put the glasses on, and, uh, and you've got that Vaseline on there, and they can't really see anything. Everything is, is so blurred. Well... Some situations in our life, difficult times, can create a bad perspective, eventually clouding our vision of God. Uh, they may describe uh, some of you this morning. You've got some difficulties, maybe some crises, some hardships and strains uh, in, your, in your life that's currently going on right now. Oh, I mean, it might be this morning... Nobody would ever know it. You've got a smile on your face, and a lot of times we're good at that when we come to church. We can put on the facades, and we can wear the mask, and we can, we can say that we're doing great, but on the inside we can be falling apart, and, and we need perspective because difficult times and, and hardships have blurred our vision, and, and it just makes us wonder, well, why is it difficult? to trust God sometimes. And that might be some of you here this morning. Uh, maybe your focus ha has been adjusted by difficulty. Well, uh, that was the case here in our text in, in 2 Kings chapter 6. So I'm going to ask you if you would, if you would turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 6, uh, verses 11 through 18 this morning will be our, uh, our focus. And uh, maybe this morning I pray that as we see the difficulty in our text that Elisha dealt with, with the king of Syria and with God's people, I pray that God will help us this morning. Wonderful. I'm glad to see many of you stand. Let's stand together uh, out of respect for the reading of God's word. And again, we'll begin at verse 11 in chapter 6 of 2 Kings. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. 
And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of, of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Verse 17, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your powerful word, inerrant, infallible, inspired, all-sufficient, immutable word this morning. And God, what we have just read is the very word of God. And I thank you for the authority of your word. And Lord, I've got nothing to say apart from your word. But Lord, I pray that you will speak through me today. May my thoughts be your thoughts. And Lord, may my words be your words this morning. And I pray that every one of us here this morning will be open and receptive to the word that you have for us. And may we respond by faith and experience the victory, Lord. Lord, I pray for those especially that are hurting this morning. And Lord, they have blurred vision and they can't focus on you and so many tough circumstances and difficulties they're facing. God, I pray you'll help them today. May we find help from above. And Lord, strengthen our faith. And may your office work be done. And may it be someone here today. Lord, they've never trusted you as our Lord and Savior. May today be the day of salvation, Lord, we ask. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, I want us to look at three principles this morning about why it's difficult to trust God sometimes. It's my prayer this morning that though difficult circumstances may cloud our vision of God or cloud our view of God, our focus may be off. I pray that we'll respond the same way that Elisha did. What God did uh, through Elisha, the strength that Elisha had, the focus that Elisha had, He'll do for you this morning. Uh, God wants to meet with us today, and that's what I want to encourage us with today is that we gather together for such a time as this, and I pray today that we'll have an encounter with the true and living God today, that God will meet with us and that we'll respond and, and that we'll trust God by faith this morning. Well, I want us to see, first of all, in verses 11 through 15, as we think about why it's difficult to trust God sometimes, sometimes circumstances overwhelm us. You know, the truth is, is that God will absolutely put more on us than we can handle. Now, the good news is, is we know the Word of God says that, that when we're tempted, we'll not be tempted above that we can handle. In other words, there's always a way out of temptation. If we give in to temptation, it's because we want to. But when it comes to this matter of being overwhelmed, circumstances, sometimes it might even put us flat on our back. But God might remind us through those circumstances that overwhelm us that we would run back to Him. So sometimes, circumstances overwhelm us. Am I speaking to somebody here this morning? Do you have some circumstances this morning, some difficulties, and it's just overwhelming you, and it's just so heavy, the weight that you're carrying, so, to the point to where maybe your bones feel like they're just about to snap. Maybe that's someone here this morning, there's help this morning, and I pray that you'll discover and experience that help. Uh, the background here in, in uh, 2 Kings chapter 6 is that the uh, Arameans were at war with Israel. So you have these two co uh, countries that's at war. And the prophet Elisha had been warning the king of Israel where the Ar Arameans would be so that he could be on guard. Well, that, well, that's pretty good. You remember a few years ago, I don't, I don't remember who the, who the coach or staff person was at Wake Forest, uh, but, but they were able to find a playbook of the opposing team. And, and, and they, you know, they found out about it, and, and, uh, and, and, and so it wasn't good. Uh, but, but somehow he got his hands on that playbook. And that's kind of what was happening here. Elisha uh, pretty much had 
the playbook of the, the king of, of, uh, of, of Aramea. And he, he knew what their next move was. He knew what they were going to do. The prophet of God was sharing the truth with, uh, with Israel and what was going to happen. And that's what the prophet of God should do, isn't it? Shouldn't we stand with the truth of God, the truth of God's word, whether it's popular or not, just stand and just share the truth? Well, that's what was happening here. Elisha, uh, he, he, would, he would know what was going to happen, and he would share that with Israel. And when the king of, of Aram learned how his plans of attack were being foiled because of Elisha, he was furious and sent out his men to capture Elisha. And that's in verses uh, 11 through 14. Notice this, it troubled the heart of the king of Syria, and he called his servants, and he was convinced that, that one of them were, uh, you know, that they were on the other side, that they had kind of betrayed, and, and so they responded in verse 12, No, none, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was, done, it was told to him that, behold, he was in Dothan. And so now they, they're, they're locating where Elisha was. And, and then in verse, uh, verse 14, Therefore he sent, uh, sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. So I think we would all agree things don't look too good for Elisha. Things don't look too good for, uh, for Israel. The king of Syria has found out where they are located and sent a great army, horses and chariots, and they are surrounding the city. It, you know, you, you've seen it before where maybe detectives will go in and they'll send a word. Uh, we've, got, we've got you surrounded. You might as well give up. You might as well uh, come out, you know, with your hands up. And that was kind of the picture here for Elisha. It didn't look good. The circumstances uh, didn't look good at all. It looked bad for Elisha. And Elisha's servant discovered the Aramean army surrounding the city, and they were alarmed, and they rushed to report the bad news to Elisha. So that was the circumstance. Notice this in verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? I mean, it looked bleak. It didn't look good at all. What a, what a difficult news was being shared to Elisha. And so the servant says, Elisha, basically, what are we going to do? The circumstances were overwhelming to his servant. Now, uh, Elisha had obvious cause to fear, did he not? I mean, what he had been doing, the king found out about it. The king of Syria found out about it. And now, they're going, they, they weren't going to, uh, to have a good fellowship together. You know, they weren't, they weren't bringing a covered dish and to have, you know, I, don't, I wish you wouldn't do that, Elisha. Just stop doing that and, and uh, let, me just, let me just pat you on the back and just say, you no, know, it wasn't that. Uh, they wanted to capture and kill Elisha and anybody else that was with Israel. So he had cause to fear. While most of us don't have to worry about being captured or even killed for our faith, yet... We do encounter overwhelming situations that cloud our vision. Maybe that's you this morning. Overwhelming circumstances. The news is bad. And according to our perception and according to our perspective, it just seems like it's all hopeless. And that was the case, really, for Elisha. It seemed like he had calls for fear. Maybe this morning you have some calls for fear this morning. These situations may include losing loved ones, dealing with stressed family situations, pressures at work, decisions about a career. I mean, we have a lot of students. Isn't it great to see this good number of students over here? And you think, Lord, what will they be doing 10 years from now? And so as you start thinking about those questions, maybe mom and dad's here this morning. It's good to see uh, boys and girls here with us this morning. I hope you picked up on my worship notes. They're right over, over on the table. Pick them up. I'd love for you to join with us and follow, follow with us through this sermon. But I'm grateful to see girl, boys and girls and students here this morning. I'm grateful to see college students here this morning. Um, last, when I found out the time of the game, by the way, this is not, this is not Tennessee orange. Let me go ahead and set that straight. Um, you know, when, when Clemson, when their orange fade, they send it up to Knoxville, right? Um, but uh, 
But, but anyway, uh, when I found out the time of the game, I knew it was probably going to be prime time, top ten game, and uh, I, I wanted my boys to go. They, they'd never been to a game where two top ten teams are, are playing, and, and, um, and I found out that Matt was, was available this weekend, and so I got tickets for them, and, and uh, they sent me a picture. I love seeing that picture they sent, and having a great time uh, in, in the stands. And uh, a lot of times those night games, I, I just, I'm just, I do not want to compromise sacred. It'd be terrible for me to stand here before you this morning exhausted physically because I didn't get let home. Listen, this right here is where it's at, folks. It's where it's at. And I told, I told my boys, I said, I said, y'all can go, but I want you in Sunday school Sunday morning. And they were here this morning in Sunday school. You know, we take the things of the world and we so easily put the things of God on the back burner. But I'm grateful for young adults and college students, a great college and career class. Terry and Tim and Steve are, are leading that. I'm so thankful for that. And what is it all about? We want to hear from God, and we want God to lead us, and we want God to guide us. And I think about our kids and our students and our college students, and they're making decisions, and they're seeking God's will, and uh, d- making these decisions about a maid and about a career and, and, and all of this. And sometimes that can be so overwhelming. And then what about financial strain? There might be some financial strains, and it might be this morning, you might say, Pastor Mark, everything you've mentioned is what I'm going through this morning. And sometimes we can get bitter. The old devil, the enemy is pretty good at what he does. He might whisper some things in your ear. You know, you might have a messenger like Elisha's servant that came and said, what are we going to do? It all seems hopeless. Uh, We're we're not going to win this. We're all surrounded. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. (laughs) It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how we fight our battles. Isn't that good this morning? That's how we fight our battles. We might be all surrounded, but notice this. Elisha's servant comes and and, and says, uh, what are we going to do? And that might be some here this morning. I just want you to know that just like Elisha and the whole nation of Israel, circumstances oftentimes will overwhelm us. And we just wonder, what's my next move? We just wonder, what's my next step? You might be in a crisis. I'll never forget visiting a home of a dear lady who's now in glory. Her, her son, uh, as he was getting out of his car, walking into the house, he collapsed. And before he hit the ground, he died of a massive heart attack. And we go in there. Miss, Miss Jean was her name. And we go in there, and I, I sat beside her, and I, I said, Miss Jean, I said, we're going to take this one step at a time. She said, what step? Overwhelmed. There didn't seem like there was any hope. And maybe that's you this morning. You don't even know what step to take. You don't even know how to pray. I just remind you that it's not up to us to pray a perfect prayer because we have a great high priest who's praying for us. And all, if all you can do is, is, is shed tears, that's a language that God understands. He's praying for you this morning. There's always hope. And you're here this morning, and maybe you're just, you're just overwhelmed. Circumstances will overwhelm us, and it makes it difficult to trust God. But I'm grateful that God is faithful, and God is able this morning. I'm telling you, He's faithful. He's able. He'll never leave you, and He'll never forsake you. And even though we have real problems and real difficulties, there's a real God in heaven. And he's the hope. And he's who we look to. And he's, he's who we trust. Just like we sang about a few moments ago. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to know, thus saith the Lord, how I've proved him over and over. I know we've got some folks here this morning, dear saints of God. And you have trusted God. And he, you have, he has proved you time and time again. And I just want you to know he'll do it again. He's faithful. If you're overwhelmed this morning, uh, sometimes it's difficult to trust God. But also it's difficult, not only when we're overwhelmed is it tough to trust God, uh, also we become afraid. That that being overwhelmed is a sense, brings a sense of fear. And instead of faith, fear, I can't. I'm overwhelmed. I've had enough. Lord, I've been praying, and it seems like that you don't care, and it seems like that you're not hearing. And and, and so, you know, fear comes in. And and that that was the servant here. 
in, in verse 15. What shall we do? How shall we do? Look at verse 16. And he answered, fear not. <laughs> I love the fear nots in the word of God. Because we don't have reason to fear. Not because we're something, but because he's everything. He's able. Fear not, Elisha says. I love this. For they that be with us are more than they that with them. Isn't it amazing the two perspectives here? The servant saw the enemy. What did Elisha see? He saw God. <laughs> How did they have two different perspectives? Was, was, was Elisha just, just being pie in the sky? Was Elisha just, just, uh, just ignoring what was, what was around them and the circumstances? No, they had two different perspectives. How shall we do, the, the servant says. And, and then Elisha says, fear not. Have you ever been so scared of something that you felt paralyzed how did you get past that fear God ever given you some victories in life God ever come through for you God ever showed up like he showed up when the disciples were at sea in that storm what happened when Jesus showed up things changed didn't it and I wonder this morning we become afraid we become fearful by the power of God we can say fear not because God is able. Have you ever been paralyzed though? I remember when uh, Valerie and I found out that we were having Megan. I, I, I remember I, I was trying to finish up my, my graduate school and I was serving on a church staff full time and, and uh, you know, very, very busy also doing interim music at that time we, we were without a music minister and and so there was I, I was a youth uh, a minister and and leading youth and, and leading worship and choir practice and and I just want you to know on Sunday nights after the choir special when I sat down in in the pew I was physically drained and exhausted now let me just say this there, there's no tired like Sunday night tired <laughs> laboring for the Lord but here, we, we found out, and, and we weren't planning on this, and we found out we were expecting, and, and I began to think about all, you know, the, 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 you know, all, all the things that go along with that, and, and you know, we, how, uh, how we, uh, our house was maxed out, and, and, um, and, and how, a you know, bigger house, and what, what are we going to do, and, 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 and all of this. And I remember sitting this one Sunday night, and I was, I was short, shortness of breath, and, um, and, and, and I remember uh, feeling lightheaded, and, uh, and, and I, I just remember how stressed that I was. And I, I, even, I even called Valerie um, when I got in the car that night. I said, I'm, I'm going to go to the ER, get checked out. This is something I was convinced that something was wrong with my heart. I was convinced about, I was fearful with, with all the circumstances, you know, the, 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 the strains of, of, of the unexpected and and, um, and then providing and, and, and all of this. And I, I was just, I was allowing it to get to me. And so I went to the, I went to the ER and everything checked out fine. EKG and all this stuff. But they did order a stress test. And, and, uh, and so I, I, I went and, and, and I, I, I ran on that treadmill. And I ran on that treadmill. And I said, I'm going to give it all I got, man, because I want them to see the full thing here. I want to, if there's any problems, I, and, and, and they finally had to turn it off. And, the, and, 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 and they, they, they told me, they said, there's nothing wrong with you. You know what's wrong with you is stress, anxieties, circumstances. And I had let something glorious, something wonderful, I had allowed it to cause me to stress instead of celebrate. Well, why did I have such a blurred vision? Because I realized more than anything that I needed to give all my fears and everything to God. And I want you to know this morning, that's a simple concept. Just give your anxieties and your fears to God. But if you will, to, if you will truly do that, then you will find victory and you will find peace and joy. And let me just say, things turned out pretty good. <laughs> I can't imagine having life without my precious girl. I mean, what a blessing and what a joy. And here I was, fearful and fretful, anxious, overwhelmed, going to the ER, stressful. And God really, through that experience, I learned Philippians 4 through 6, or Philippians 4, 
uh, 6 and 7, I, I learned that that passage of Scripture really is true. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let our request be made known unto God. Then what happens? And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard our hearts or will keep our hearts in Christ Jesus. What I'm trying to say this morning is if you become fearful and afraid, you can trade your fears, you can trade your anxieties with the peace of God that passes all understanding. How does that happen? Faith. Faith that you give it to God and say, Lord, I've struggled with this and I've had blurred vision long enough. I can't even see you in this, God, but Lord, I give it to you. And, and God is able. He'll do more in one second than we can do in a lifetime striving. It's a whole lot better. He'll set you free this morning. Notice what Elisha told his servant in verse 16. Fear not. How could Elisha say that? Because Elisha had a clear vision despite the overwhelming circumstances. Isn't it great that you can know God, have a close walk with God, and even in the midst of a storm, have a clear perspective that God is faithful and God is able. I love Elisha, Elisha's perspective as a result of steadfast faith in the Lord. Elisha didn't just get that because he's a lucky man. No, he knew God. He was close to the Lord. And what God did for Elisha and the perspective that Elisha had. Here's Elisha's servant saying, what are we going to do? And, and Elisha because he was close to the Lord, said, fear not. They that are with us are more than they that are around us. He had the right perspective because of a steadfast faith, trusting the Lord. Elisha wasn't worried because his trust was in the Lord. I, I just wonder this morning, what about you? I mean, are you living in fear? Trade that fear with faith and the peace of God and have a clear perspective. Remember what Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given us a spirit of what? Fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. That's what God will do for you. You say, Pastor, you don't, you don't know me. I'm a worry wart. Yeah, well, God can, God can transform you. God can change that. He can take those anxieties away and give you the peace of God that passes all understanding. He hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, power to make it through, of love and of a sound mind. So times of being overwhelmed and times of being afraid makes it difficult to trust God. But also the fact that we can't see what God is doing makes it difficult to trust God. We can't always see the hand of God and what God is doing. Notice Elisha's prayer for his servant that the Lord might open his eyes. Look at verse 17. And Elisha prayed. Isn't it something that Elisha didn't try to talk him into and reason with him? Elisha's servant has real fear. He says, what are we going to do? And Elisha says, let's pray. <laughs> That's the greatest thing we can do, folks. Is turn to God. There's a power available when we turn to God. There's a perspective that we'll gain when we turn to God. And I might just say this this morning. It might be that we don't have perspective because we're not praying. Let's turn to God and let's pray. And Elisha said in verse 17, he prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about. Elisha. Obviously, his vision was so blurred due to the fear the servant couldn't see the right perspective. And that might be somebody here this morning. And it's okay if it's that way. That's, that's, circumstances will overwhelm us. And it's natural, you know, for our, our response to allow those real circumstances that overwhelm us to turn to fear. And we may even wonder how we're going to get through. But I remind you that our hope is in the true and living God, the great creator who is, who is almighty and all-powerful, supreme and, and, and living and, and powerful. He's, he's never made a mistake. 
He's never lost a battle. That's the God that you and I believe in. That's the God that Elisha was close to, that his servant wasn't focused on. His servant was focusing on his circumstances. I, I remember, you know, we, we don't always, it doesn't make sense to us sometimes. God, what are you doing? Why is this happening? I don't understand. But we can't always see the hand of God at work. But how many times, folks, have we looked back on something, and in looking back on it, we can say, Lord, I can see, I know that you were faithful. Many times, we can't always see every, we can't see the whole picture. All we see a lot of times are pieces to the puzzle. We were on vacation at the beach this past summer. Was it a 2,000-piece puzzle? I just want you to know, I don't have patience for that. I mean, I'm, I'm working on this one, okay, I'm working on this one section, and it was Reese's uh, candy bars, and it Reese's cups, and whatever else, Hershey bars, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'll say, okay, I'm going to put together these Reese's cups. Well, there's the Reese's cups, and then there's the miniature ones, and then there's, it's like, why is, and I'm trying to put all this together, and I, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't make sense of it. That's how, that's how life is, isn't it? We just have a, a, a piece of the puzzle at a time, and it makes no sense, but God sees the whole picture. Let's turn to Him, and Let's trust him. I remember when I was in high school, I, I, a lot of times, you know, when I was in the band, I, I, I loved it. I was in the marching band from eighth grade to my senior year, and I loved marching band. I loved summer band camp. I loved competitions, but I especially loved Friday nights. My brother played football, and he was busting heads on the football field, and I was in the stand busting drum heads. My senior year, I busted 16 drum heads, and I loved it. I hang them up in the band room. They're my trophies. You know, the band director didn't really like it too much, but I loved it. I love marching band. I love that my son is in North Greenville's marching band. I love going to the games and seeing him and, and enjoying that. I know the hard work behind it, and I love that, my, that Michael is in the Liberty Band, and last year, for the first time in school history, uh, the, Jeff knows he was at Liberty. We were always small and always seemed to come up a little short. But for the first time in school history, Liberty Marching Band went to the state uh, uh, championships and, and uh, finished, was a finalist in the state. And I love that because in my days, uh, we, we were always small and people made fun of the band. And, and I thought, man, if they could just come to band camp, we put in just as much hard work as everybody else. We work hard and it's like, I wish they could see that. But you see, they couldn't see it. They didn't have the same perspective that I had. And I believe that's how it is with the Lord a lot of times. We don't know what God is doing. And God is so much greater than you and I. And His ways are not always our ways. And circumstances will overwhelm us. And we don't know why God has allowed it to happen. But God knows what He's doing. And God is in control. And so many times we can't see what God is doing. Look at verse, uh, verse 17. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, the servant, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of chariots, or, or horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Look at verse 18. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. The servant was only focused on what his physical eyes could see. Elisha prayed for him to see through the eyes of faith that God was there ready to fight on their behalf. God will fight on your behalf, folks. But we got to have faith. we got to trust Him. Yeah, there's circumstances that will overwhelm us. You know, students, there might be some relationship things that's just overwhelming you. There might be some things at school. Uh, there might be some difficulties and obstacles that, that you're facing and, and it blurs your vision, and you just wonder, where is God? How is this working? What about, what about pressures at home, a difficult home life? There might be some real circumstances that are tough, and it overwhelms us. What about on the job? What about difficulties that we face on the job? And all of these are real. What about our health? We're just waiting to get news from the doctor. And, and, and so how do, we, how do we handle that? I mean, real problems, real difficulties. Well, instead of seeing through the physical eyes, I want to encourage us to allow God to help us to see through the spiritual eyes that God is faithful and He will go before us. I don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know. I don't know what this week holds, but I know who holds it. God is faithful. Don't be overwhelmed with fear. 
A little talk with Jesus will make it right. There's power. And it might be that when you pray, God may not answer the way that you're praying. But he'll always give you perspective. And that perspective is that he's in control and that his grace is sufficient and his strength is perfect. And that's my prayer for you this morning. Whatever you're facing, whatever is overwhelming you this morning, that you will see through the eyes of faith. Oh God, open our eyes this morning. Like Elisha prayed for his servant, God, open our eyes this morning and help us to see through the eyes of faith. We must understand that when our circumstance or our situation When it doesn't make sense, we're only seeing a few pieces of the puzzle while God sees it all. He's sovereign. He's in control. He's able. And I remind you this morning, Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. All things. And you say, I don't see how in the world what I'm going through is a good thing or or what I'm going through could even possibly be good. But with God, he's in control. And let's look to him and let's trust in him. Maybe you've been holding on and trying to do it yourself. That'll wear you out. Lean on the Lord. See through the eyes of faith. When we release our fears and trust God to work, he's able every time. But think about this. We have the potential to limit God. That's amazing. I'm talking about the great creator. How do I limit God when I don't faith him like I should? When I don't believe like I should? I don't know this morning what may be overwhelming some of you here this morning. But faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Elisha had that perspective. And I want you to have that perspective this morning. It's really going to be okay. How can you say that, preacher? Because God is in control. God is faithful, and he's able. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name right now that for those of us that have blurred vision, for those of us that are overwhelmed by our circumstances, for those of us, Lord, that are fearful, thinking about even what's going to happen tomorrow or this week or or six weeks from now, whatever it is. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll open our eyes. God, that we'll see that you are faithful and that you are able and that you will go before us and you will fight for us on our behalf, just like you did for Elisha and the people of God. Lord, give us victory today. Maybe someone, Lord, they've been fighting it long enough. Help us, Lord, to release it and give it to you. Place it in your hands. What better hands can it be in than your hands, dear God? Lord, change our perspective today. Lord, help us to see through the eyes of faith. Lord, replace our fear with faith, dear God. Give us the victory today, Lord Jesus, and we'll give you praise. For that one that's paralyzed with fear right now, with overwhelming circumstances and dealing with fear, Lord, set us free today. There's a help from you available, and I pray we'll experience that as we trust in you. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand together as Chad leads us this morning? I encourage you to come. Let's have victory today, trusting the Lord. The altar is open. Come on this morning, don't delay. Come on this morning. Don't delay. There's help available. There's help available.
Believe his word. Pay attention this morning. This, uh, this dear saint of God wants to come and share a praise report. Thank God. You know, the devil sure didn't want me to come down here, but I've been praying all week. Lord, please take care of us with the weather, and I will praise you. Look, we're all here. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what I wanted to say. Amen. Amen. Let's give God the glory this morning. I just want to say there's nothing too big for God. Whatever somebody here is going through, um, years ago, you know, a lot of you know Chris is a recovering alcoholic. Um, and I was a mess. I grew up with alcoholic parents. And so what did I do? I married an alcoholic, the last thing I wanted to do, because that's what I knew. And uh, God got me to the point of surrendering it all to him and stopped trying to do it my way which wasn't working, <clears throat> and I gave it all to him. And I prayed for Chris for six years. In the meantime, God was working on me. He knew I was such a mess that I needed to be in recovery first because otherwise I would have undermined Chris's sobriety. And six years later, Chris got saved and sober at the same time. We, our marriage was at the point that we were living under the same roof, and that was where it ended. Um, and God healed. He healed each of us separately, and he healed our marriage because we were willing to give it all to him. We have to surrender it all to him. It's the only way that he can do his work and change our lives, and I'm so thankful that he did. Amen. Amen. I'm asking our musicians if they'll play through it. Yeah, let's give the Lord praise. Amen. It's, it's great to hear. Believers in Christ share the faithfulness of God and the victory that will come when we trust in Him. And you might be here this morning, and that victory is waiting. Believe, respond, and say yes to the Lord, and you'll have that victory. If you'll play, let's play through another verse. And I, The altar is open. I encourage you to come right now. Let's experience that hope, that help. Be restored this morning. Come on home. through another verse. Would you come? Amen. As we close, I wonder how many of you here know someone that's just overwhelmed uh, they're going through some really difficult, tough waters right now. 
If God has laid that person on your heart, I want us to close in prayer. And let's pray for those individuals. And let's encourage them. Let's come alongside of them and let them know that we're right there with them. God can use us alongside of someone that's struggling. And tonight we're going to be, I encourage you to come back tonight, we're going to be in 2 Kings chapter 7. What do we do when the bottom falls out? What do we do? Well, there's some steps. And I believe we see that in chapter 7. I encourage you to, to be back tonight. But let's pray for those ones that we're burdened about, those that we know that's struggling. And I'm going to ask Brother Randy, if you would, would you close us in prayer? And specifically, let's pray for those that we can encourage.